We begin with what has been a consequential week at the end of a groundbreaking year for artificial intelligence. Google has just released its newest AI model, Gemini. In some tests, it beats out OpenAI's best tech. The prospect of an AI arms race led Pope Francis on Thursday to call for a binding international treaty to avert what he called technological dictatorship. As AI becomes more powerful, the companies building it are increasingly keeping the tech closely guarded. But Meta, which owns Facebook and Instagram, says there's a better and fairer way to build AI without a handful of companies gaining too much power. You know how to put on the headset? Uh, I don't know, you're about to tell me. This was the first thing Meta wanted us to see. Ready? And here. Hola a todos. Mi nombre es Paco Guzman. Experimental AI that could make learning a foreign language obsolete. Our team is very excited to share with you our achievements this year. It's like watching with subtitles. My name is Anna. In real time, English became Italian. Mi chiamo Anna. Sono entusiasta. Chinese turned back into English. Being here, translate the voices of 100 languages into 36 different ones. Do you have to tell the system which language is being spoken? No, justement. No, that's the advantage of multilingual and linguistic system. We don't need to tell the system what the language is. But what Meta really wants you to notice in all these examples all right, we both in here. isn't just what they've done, but how they've done it. What would you like the background to be? Uh, how about sunflowers? Yes. Unlike other big tech labs, Meta publishes and shares their research, open source. Some people believe that for commercial interests, you need to keep it closed. Most seem to think that. Yes. Yes. Joelle Pino runs Meta's Fundamental AI Research Group, or FAIR, which among other things developed PyTorch, a piece of coding infrastructure that much of modern AI is built on. So PyTorch is essentially like a set of computer libraries that gives you a way to build pieces of code much faster. Does Facebook even own it anymore? Meta, excuse me? No, we have um, passed it on to an external foundation. To be clear, this isn't charity. Meta hopes the open approach will help it keep pace with Google and Microsoft by leveraging the help of thousands of independent developers. But open science is also a deeply held conviction for the leaders of FAIR. So I wouldn't be working in any company that wasn't practicing open research. I have no interest in that. Jan LeCun, Meta's chief AI scientist, was hired by Mark Zuckerberg to start FAIR in 2013 but held on to his teaching job at NYU and his focus on fundamental research. Lacoon is the AI pioneer who helped prove computers could learn on their own how to recognize numbers using neural nets long before others believed in them. Essentially, very, very, very few people were working on neural nets then. A few scientists in San Diego, for example, were working on this. And then Jeffrey Hinton, who uh, I ended up working with, who was interested in this, but he was really kind of uh, a bit alone. But Jeffrey Hinton and that little band of upstarts were eventually proven right. In 2018, Hinton, Lacoon, and Yashua Bengio, the so-called godfathers of AI, shared the Turing Award for their groundbreaking research. By then, Hinton had gone to work at Google. Lacoon was scooped up by Facebook. His work helped the site recommend friends, optimize ads, and, yes, automatically censor posts that violate the rules. If you try to rip out deep learning out of Meta today, the entire company crumbles. It's literally built around it. But that dynamic is changing fast. Now, AI isn't just supporting existing tech, but threatening to overturn it. A possible future where the open internet with millions of independent websites is replaced by just a handful of powerful AI systems. Now, if you imagine this kind of future, where all of our information diet is mediated by those AI systems, you do not want those things to be controlled by a small number of companies on the west coast of the US. Those systems will constitute the repository of all human knowledge and culture. You can't have that centralized. It needs to be open. Well, there's debate on that. While many agree with Lacoon that AI will be so transformational it must be publicly shared, others fear it could be so dangerous it should be built by just a few and perhaps at a much slower pace. Like a Greek epic, the godfathers of AI are split on the question. The current methodologies are not demonstrably safe. Bengio is calling for AI regulation. Hinton, beginning in our March interview, has been warning AI could take over from people. What do you think the chances are 
of AI just wiping out humanity? It's not inconceivable. Okay. That's all I'll say. I disagree with this completely. Lacoon says existential risk is science fiction. It's below the chances of an asteroid hitting the Earth and, you know, a global nuclear war. The disagreement, Lacoon says, comes down to faith in people. Lacoon trusts the world's institutions to keep AI safe. While Hinton worries repressive governments could use robot soldiers to perpetrate atrocities, Lacoon actually sees an upside in autonomous weapons. Can that technology protect democracy, like, like in Ukraine? Ukraine makes massive use of drones and they're starting to put AI into it. Uh, is it good or is it bad? I think it's necessary, regardless of whether you think it's good or bad. Autonomous weapons are necessary. Well, for the protection of democracy in that case. But you know, obviously the concern is what if it's Hitler who has them rather than Roosevelt? Well, then it's the history of the world. You know, who has better technology? Is it the good guys or the bad guys? Armed with that mix of optimism and inevitability, Lacoon opposes regulation on basic AI research. His main note of caution is against hype. He says superintelligence is still very far off. Like, where is the domestic robot that can do what a 10-year-old can do? You know, clear up the dinner table and fill up the dishwasher. And so we have a lot of work to do. You're welcome. Some of that work is being done here. So you've built like a home here. We have built a fully-sized mock apartment. Dhruv Batra oversees Meta's robotics lab. Hey, Spot, can you move the penguin from the console to the dining table? Their goal is creating a helpful, autonomous, domestic robot. That penguin in the arm camera is detected constantly. And yes, there are going to be some oh, miss. It thought Greg be, was a penguin yeah, for a minute. There are some misdetections as well. This was a somewhat unusual demo. Batra, equally willing to show off his team's progress and concede how very far they still have to go. Uh-oh, on its head. <laughs> yeah, it understands shape, but it doesn't know what the right side up is. There have to be a thousand things like that that you have to slowly teach it. There's a whole amount of knowledge that you just consider commonsensical that we don't have yet in robots or in AI in general. But step by step, they're being taught a human choice to create superhuman intelligence. But if it's openly shared, <laughs> nice catch. this awesome new force won't replace us, Lacoon promises, but empower us. You have to do it right, obviously. I mean, there are you know, side effects of technology that you have to mitigate as much as you can, but the benefits are you know, far overwhelmed the, the, uh, the dangers. Uh, this debate about open source or closed is really heating up. IBM and Apple have said they're more in the open source camp. Uh, the regulation in Europe, which is still kind of being hashed out, will also kind of get into this question. Do we want it open or do we want it closed? You've done so much on this already. I'm curious, are you more freaked out by AI and where this can go and where we are going? Or, I guess, intrigued and this is amazing technology? <laughs> That is an interesting question, Dana. <laughs> I, I've reflected on this a little bit. Yeah. I do find the more you're exposed to it, rightly or wrongly, the more you start to accept it. And this mm. is a concern that Jeff Hinton uh, uh, got into on 60 Minutes a couple months ago, yeah. that these systems will kind of convince us that they're good. They're okay. Maybe they are good. That's what we all That's have to That's what the out. robots want us to think, is what it all comes down <laughs> to. There is that argument. Or maybe no robot anchors, Brian Applegate. No robot you anchors. You hear that? 